Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'm checking out a desktop that looks really like Mac OS. Now is it Mac OS? Well, you'll be pleased to know that this is a Linux distribution and it's actually Manjaro. So we get to say we use Arch by the way, as well as use the awesome package manager Pac-Man. Let's just install some things for later use. So I'll do sudo pacman s htop and look at that, we can use Pac-Man on the system. So what is Qfish desktop? Well, Qfish has their own operating system, which allows you to use their desktop. It's still being built up, but features a modern desktop environment, which is built on Qt, Quick, and KDE. So you'll see some KDE apps around, but let's check the desktop out a little bit so we can see how it resembles Mac OS. So at the top, we have a very small little bar here, our status bar, and on the right-hand side, it shows us our volume and the current time. If we click on that, we have a different options here to get to our settings, power down the machine, tells you what user's in, you can turn Wi-Fi on off, Bluetooth on and off, and dark mode on and off. You also have volume control, and that's really it over here. So here's the fantastic part. Manjaro looks like they will be porting in this desktop environment, which is quite exciting because I love using Arch-based Linux distributions, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. Now you have another option that resembles Mac OS with the dock at the bottom and what looks like acrylic transparency on the dock. If we hit the launcher, that also looks like something you'd find over on a Mac. You have your applications launched, again, with the same kind of transparent background. You can search at the top, so if I wanted to search something like display, it's not quite that smart, so let's actually look in settings here. And of course, this is all an unstable release still. If you wanna get it from Manjaro, you'll have to go straight to the source on GitHub where it's being developed, but it works pretty well. I've been through it quite a bit now and I really enjoy how minimal it is. There's really not much in your face, yet you still get the Linux power that runs the system. Backgrounds are absolutely stunning. The dock, you can change between large, huge, medium, and small. I actually like the large one a little better. You can go to the right-hand side, the left-hand side, or keep it at the bottom. Add, change out users, change languages, control battery power, and let's look at the about section. So this is Manjaro with the 5.10 kernel running on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X with eight gigs of RAM. And it says it's Qfish OS, which is interesting. Manjaro hasn't quite changed out this logo, I guess, but I assume they will. Let's check out some of the applications at the bottom of the screen. This is really all you have. It's so minimal. Again, a little bit of quick access on the top right, but then you have your launcher, which we looked at, Firefox, the default web browser here, and you have your file manager or browser. This allows you to navigate the system and again, looks very much like what you would find in a Mac desktop. You can go back and forth between the various different places you visited. You get a readout of where you're currently at up top. Over here, you can switch the type of icons. I personally like lists, although it's not quite what I would consider a list. Again, it's kind of an icon list instead of just a list with details. You can of course maximize, minimize, exit out, and then on the left-hand side, you have quick locations like the desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, and trash, which all belongs to the home user. And then finally, you have your root directory where you can start looking through the root file system. If we exit out of there, we have settings, which we already kind of explored, so we won't get too much into it. What I'll do now is I'm gonna to toggle on that dark mode so we can kind of see what things look like in dark. I personally like this even more. You'll also notice in the top left, when you launch something and you have it open, you'll see the current app that's selected. So I launched Firefox. If you right click on this, you can have very minimal options currently. I wonder if they're gonna make that sort of like they do in Mac, where you're able to quit and interact with a program. I assume they are. Everything's pretty solid here. Quick opening of apps. Even the calculator really resembles what you would find on a Mac. Now, one thing I'll say that is currently missing, I wonder if they'll add it in, is a launcher, which if you hit something like command space or control space or what have you, you would normally get a little search bar that comes across in the middle of the screen. You could either do math in it, search for files, search for things on the web. It'd be a great addition to this to make it really even more functional and just a little easier to use because then you can search around your system, no problem. Let's check out console. Like I said, the system comes with some of the KDE applications. Let's list things out here. We'll use HTOP just to check out the system resource usage. This is also what's fantastic. It's actually more minimal than let's say GNOME. So 720 megabytes out of 
eight gigabytes being used currently. CPU is running between 1.3 and 2.6%. We have 59 tasks, 134 threads, 75 kernel threads, and the system's already been up for 18 minutes. So for comparison, the latest GNOME runs around 800 megabytes. Of course, this is after about 20 minutes of uptime, so this number can come down a little bit. Let's also check out some system information. This is Manjaro, which is an Arch Linux-based distribution running kernel 5.10. It has 682 source packages. It's using ZHS 5.8 as the default shell environment. The desktop environment is called Cubefish. The window manager is built on Kwin. Icons are called Cruel. Default terminal is console from, from the KDE tools. Again, being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X with around 770 megabytes out of eight gigs being used. In my opinion, this is exciting development, especially because we'll get to use Manjaro, an Arch Linux-based distribution, on top of a beautifully minimal desktop environment. We even have Manjaro Hello here, which currently is set to launch at startup. It's a great little application that just introduces you to the Manjaro system and onboards you pretty quickly with various things like where to get involved, how to get support, and a ton of documentation, including their wiki. Applications are also available here which tells you various different browsers, email clients, and various different subcategories of applications that you can get for the system. If we do check out the launcher again, let's check out add and removing programs. What does their application store look like? And here it is. This of course looks a lot different than what you would get on a Mac, but it looks pretty solid as well. Shows you the installed and some of the most popular applications right off the bat. Anyways, you can manage your applications and search for them over here on the top left-hand corner. If I wanted something like GIMP, I could search for it. And here are a bunch of results. Our repositories include core, extra community, and multi-lib. And if we hit the updates tab, you get all the various different updates on the system that you can apply at the bottom. You can of course run it through the terminal via Pac-Man as well. Back through the launcher, if you wanna check out a few more things, we have Kate available here, which is a nice little text editor and seems to be the default. That also comes from KDE Tools. The Pulse Audio Manager, so we can manage our audio. You can manage your firewall settings, Manjaro settings. Let's see what this looks like right here. So we have access to editing things in the kernel, user accounts, time date, locale settings, and hardware configuration. Overall, I'm very excited for this desktop environment to come out, especially on Manjaro. Cute Fish OS is another place you can try this out. Another great thing is it's open source and mobile friendly. Let me know if you're excited to try out Cute Fish OS or the Cute Fish desktop environment. I'm excited to see future development on this and excited for the users who need a super minimal environment with not too much getting in the way of them using their desktop. This might be a great option. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.